Jan Easterling, a newspaper reporter, began her day on July 18, 1988, the way she did most days, checking with the Lee County Sheriff's Department. Easterling was tasked with covering everything that happened in the three mostly rural counties east of Columbia, South Carolina. She wrote about crime, the courts, the local economy, and whatever else she found interesting. But July 18th would be a day she never forgot, after speaking with Lee County Sheriff Liston Truesdale. He told her how days earlier, a few miles outside of Bishopville, South Carolina, a couple awoke to find their Ford LTD badly scratched. The hood ornament was broken, and the chrome was chewed up, and the car's wiring was ripped out. The sheriff was headed to the scene, a house on a sandy dead end off a two-lane county road. He asked her if she would like to come along. Of course, she agreed. What she saw next would become an uncanny story of legend in South Carolina's folklore forever. So what did she see? And what terrorized the swamps of Skateboard? Let's try and find out. Hello, I'm Mike Droberg, a Marine Corps veteran and filmmaker, and we will answer these questions on today's episode of Paranormal History. Over the course of that Monday, she met the couple with a damaged car and a deputy who had interviewed two men chased by a creature from a nearby swamp. She also talked with a teenager who would become an instant celebrity after she included a quote from him about seeing a red-eyed monster with skin like a lizard. Easterling had no way of knowing what would happen next, that the story would capture the world's curiosity and Bishopville would join a select group of places known for spawning monsters that haunt imaginations beyond their borders. The county's lizard man would enter the ranks of Bigfoot, the Mothman, and the Chupacabra of Puerto Rico. Bishopville, a town of about 3,600 then, and even fewer today, would come to see its monsters as a means to economic revival. The Lizard Man's ascension from rumor to legend began when Easterling's paper, The State, put the story on its Tuesday's front page with the enticing headline, Lizard Man Lurking in Lee County Swamp. That day, a radio station in Columbia read the story on air and offered an eye-popping reward of $1 million for the creature's capture. Bishopville is usually only a waypoint from travelers between Columbia and Florence on Interstate 20, but in an instant it became a destination. The story ran on Tuesday and people grabbed their campers and tents and headed that way, Easterling said. By the time the weekly Lee County Observer went to press on Wednesday, its writers remarked on the town's sudden statewide notoriety, and they fretted about all the people wandering through the woods late at night with flashlights and guns. The legend of the lizard man wasn't yet two days old. That first Monday in July 1988, Christopher Davis was a quiet 17 year old on the high school basketball team and he told Easterling a harrowing story. He described how he had a flat tire driving home from a night shift at McDonald's and how as he was putting the jack back in his trunk he saw a seven foot tall creature with scaly red skin and red eyes running towards him. He told her how it caught up with him as he sped away and made a thud as it landed on his roof. He described seeing its three-fingered claws on his windshield until he finally swerved enough to throw the thing off. Within days, Davis was repeating the story to radio hosts and tourists who gawked at his damaged car. It didn't take long before he became a caricature on roadside merchandise. In a matter of days, Easterling remembers, Lizard Man t-shirts were flying like flags in the wind. A week after its first report on the creature, the Sports World store in Bishopville was selling Lee County Lizard Patrol shirts and hats. After another week, a front page headline declared, Lizard Business Booming in County. Sensing an opportunity, entrepreneurs started hawking lizard juice, which was lemonade, dyed green, and lizard eggs, which were watermelons. Several vendors set up on the side of Browntown Road, a two-lane highway southwest of Bishopville. Then the road sinks down a hill into a dense, lush thicket of mucky woods called Skateboard Swamp. Today, there is little to distinguish the swamp except a short bridge over a creek that moves so slowly 
that decaying leaves steep the water a deep brown. The forest is dense, quickly trapping the last traces of light when the sun falls below the hill. It's hauntingly empty now, leaving no hint that it was briefly the hottest destination in Lee County. For weeks, it was packed with dozens of lizardman hunters who set up campers and built fires along the road. By the end of that summer, lizardman mania died. No one saw the lizardman for weeks, and a heavily publicized hoax made it all feel like a joke that was getting old. Whatever the lizardman is, its enthusiasts have connected about a dozen strange occurrences to the creature. Though relatively few people have described anything resembling a lizard, as many have said they saw something brown and hairy. Most sightings happened in the late 80s and early 90s when swamp creatures were simmering in popular culture. Throughout the 80s, DC Comics released a serial tale in two movies about a character called the Swamp Thing. A similar character, the Gill Man, made an appearance in the 1987 cult classic, The Monster Squad, which hit video stores a few months before the Lizard Man made the news. Only a few sightings have been reported since. It seemed like people in Bishopville alternately laughed at the legend and found it embarrassing, fearing that their town would be remembered as the butt of a national joke. Bishopville kept its distance from the Lizard Man for a long time. Even in the summer of 1988, journalists documented the way locals fretted about how their town looked to the outside world and worried that the community's integrity was being traded for a shot of prosperity. Sheriff Truesdale said the joke was on the outsiders. After all, they were the ones traveling to the swamps in South Carolina in the dead of the summer. Still, many were burned by the experience of being thrust into national notoriety. The Post and the Courier sent letters and Facebook messages to more than a dozen people who either reported seeing something strange around the skateboard swamp or had family members who did. Only two responded, including one woman who said she and her mother had been frustrated for decades that their name was connected to the Lizard Man. They never said they saw such a thing, she said. They just said they saw something, maybe an animal, run out of the swamp. But cable TV documentaries kept re-airing their statements, and friends kept calling to ask if they had really encountered the Lizard Man. The woman asked not to be named, saying she did not want to stir up that talk again and risk her children being bullied for it. Reached by a reporter, her mother said, I don't want to talk about it, and hung up. And that reaction isn't unusual. For as long as people have had frightening encounters in Skateboard Swamp, they have hesitated to talk about them publicly. One construction worker told police he didn't even tell his family he had seen a Bigfoot-like creature because he figured they would say he was drunk, even though he insisted that he wasn't. A teenager who saw something jump in the road said that the people he told laughed at him. They chalked it up to his imagination. Even Davis, who became famous for his sighting, initially kept his story to himself because he thought people wouldn't believe him. There is a wide consensus that he was generally frightened by the encounter. Speaking briefly with the Post and the Courier, his aunt said he was terribly upset that night. He was horrified, and she said the experience really affected him. Davis would eventually say that the experience hadn't been worth it. Easterling caught up with him after the frenzy died down. She reported that he had left his high school basketball team and quit his fast food job because interviews and public appearances had taken so much of his time. Hopes of a speaking tour never occurred. Mostly he talked to visitors at the Lizard Man Information Center, which is really more than a t-shirt stand. For his time citing autographs and retelling the story, Davis estimated he made about $3,000. He's gotten to where he doesn't want to talk about it anymore, Truesdale told Eastling, according to the 1989 article in The State. It would make me mad too if I saw something and people ridiculed me. Davis quickly fell from the public eye, and he didn't reappear in the news again until 2009 when a group of men broke into his Sumter County home, stole drugs and money, and murdered him. The killing inspired a wave of headlines about the demise of the Lizard Man witness. Also, let's agree on this. Sheriff Liston Truesdale is the main reason the Lizard Man legend became so big. Without Truesdale, there wouldn't be a Lizard Man story as we know it. Truesdale didn't dismiss reports like Davis's, even if he cracked a few jokes in the papers about what was lurking in the woods. He didn't feel he could write them off. After all, something was frightening the people who he found reputable. He took detailed statements threatened to prosecute anyone who filed a hoax, and he kept that promise when an airman from the nearby Shaw Air Force Base, driving a camouflage Toyota with a fake Gatling gun on the hood, 
claimed he saw the creature near I-20 and shot it in the neck with his handgun. He said he collected a sample of Lizardman's skin, but recanted after the sheriff recognized them as fish scales, admitting he made the story up just to keep the legend alive. In addition to a count of lying to police, Truesdale slapped him with a weapons charge. Truesdale's seriousness made him an enticing character in the media. He played the part too, entering the phone at all hours as reporters called from London and as far away as Australia. After a while, he remarked to the Lee County Observer that he only had time for regular police work after midnight and the experience had worn him so thin that he fell asleep in the middle of an interview with the Detroit Free Press. Still, he added, the press had the right to know what was going on. The Lizard Man wasn't just Lee County news, it was the world's. Sheriff Truesdale died in 2015. Even with the main witnesses and participants in the story of the Lizard Man being deceased, the legend of the Lizard Man of the Skateboard Swamp continues to intrigue and captivate, leaving us with a mysterious tale that blends folklore and the unknown, inviting curiosity and speculation for generations to come. What are your thoughts about the Lizard Man? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Paranormal History. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any ideas for shows, please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time.